Welcome to Project Design I.O. This is a quick introduction to reporting. If you have access to the exercise file, please open it and follow with me. Otherwise, just watch. And then you can also access the whole course and the content free of charge following the link in the description below. Before we start, I just wanted to mention if you're ever going to print out this schematic drawing, you may want to add extra fields in here. And all the ones you can see in this title block are linked to the properties. So document number is automatically being read from here, from document number. As you can see, there's more fields like main contract, electric, electrical contractor, and so on, and address. You can also use them fields and link them automatically. I'll just show you an example easiest way I copy the document number and I'm gonna edit this to main contractor and in here I'm gonna also type in main contractor so at the moment it just says main contractor because that field is blank so if I go test and okay you see that will inherit the property from your project settings so this is quite a clever way and quicker way of working if you're actually gonna print from a pro design. If not, don't worry about it. Now, if you can see this switchboard, that switchboard, and those distribution boards are red, and that one is black, that's because the load is not actually connected because those in cameras are open. To close them, simply click on the in camera. The little letter C will appear that indicates that the uh, in camera is closed. And that means now the, the full path is actually feeding the distribution board. Okay, now let's just run calculation. There we go. There's no warning. In the previous video, I used an example of a Excel spreadsheet distribution board. The DB Kitchen calculated load is exactly as per this example, as you can see. So this is just to prove that the Excel schedule works the same way as ProDesign. So going back to here, what reports are actually most useful? Well, to answer that question first, we need to establish what is the purpose of your report. First one, send your design as a design pack for approval to a consultant or client. Second, if you want to provide useful information to the guys on site, there will be different reports for those different purposes. So first purpose, you want to create design pack for approval. In that case, what you should include in your reports is the following cables calculation. And I would produce separate report for final circuit, separate report for submain distribution. I will explain that in a separate video. Then I would produce cable schedule then I will produce a load summary and I will produce circuit chart based on load. I will also produce energy and time current selectivity report and optionally I would also include protected device settings. That's all you need as a design pack. Now if the purpose is to provide helpful information to the guys on site, I would then provide cable schedule uh, with submains, but only if my cable schedule is not already added to my LV distribution schematic drawing, which typically this is what I do. Therefore, I wouldn't include that schedule because it'd be redundant. What's very useful is the distribution board schedule number three that will provide all the necessary information for the guys on site i explain that in detail a bit later and also protective device settings report is very useful especially towards the end at the commissioning stage it's actually critical information and sometimes it's very useful to print this zs measurement report to confirm your design calculations during testing right that's all the reports you need to create for those two different purposes okay this was just a quick introduction what is useful what you should do what you should use but the details i will explain in a separate videos thank you very much for watching